hello and welcome back to the channel today we are going to be taking a look at how to add a next and previous button to the tabs element this is going to be one of the best solution you will get to making the oxygen tabs accessible because by default the oxygen tab is not keyboard accessible but by adding a next and previous button to it you can easily make it accessible right now i have a next button here which if I click into the next tab, you're going to see the previous button. So I go next. And then when I get to the last tab, I only see the previous and not the next. Now I want to point out that these buttons are dynamically added. So you don't have to manually do it. And they will automatically adjust as you increase your tabs and tab contents. So the last tab will always have only the previous button. And the first tab will always have only the next button. So let's see how it works. Now I'm going to use the keyboard to tab it. So I'm tabbing with the keyboard right now. I'm going to hit enter. Next, I'm tabbing again, tabbing again. Then by the time I tab again, it's going to go to the previous. And then I can shift tab to go to the previous, shift tab to go to the previous. And that is it. And if I use a screen reader, you'll see that it's Oxygen going to tutorial. be um, accessible tab. to the tab screen one. reader. So next if I question. see, it can say it's next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Previous question. Pre previous question. Previous question. Previous question. So you can see that it's accessible to the screen reader. Now let me turn that off. Extensions. I want to show you that if we increase the number of tabs, this button is going to adjust. So I'm going to go into Oxygen and then I'm going to increase these tabs to five tabs. So I'm just going to duplicate this and then change this text to five. And then I'm going to duplicate this and then I'm going to change that text to five. I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to refresh the front end. Now we're going to have five. Now take note that tab four has only the previous question. But by the time I refresh it and we have five tabs, tabs four will have two previous and next and tab five will have just that. And if you take a look at here, you see that we do not have any buttons inside these tab contents. These buttons are dynamically added and styled and with the proper area labels added to it to make it accessible. Now let's take a look at how this was created. So here I have a clean slate, a new tab that I've not added any next and previous button. I've not added any code block to it. So if I go to the back end, you're going to see that we have um, just uh, four tabs with nothing in no button in the tab. The first thing I'm going to do is to add a code block. So I'm just going to drop in a code block there. And then I will first of all go in and comment out this hello world. I have recorder workspace add on here. So I'm going to be using the block pad, which is a feature of recorder workspace. If you haven't heard about recorder workspace, please take a look at this video linked at the top right corner and you'll be glad you did. I'm going to open the JavaScript section. I'm just going to double click it to expand it. And then I'm going to hit here to expand. The first thing I'm going to do is to wrap every code that I'm going to write inside a document ready function. So I'm just going to paste that document.add event listener DOM content loaded. I'm just going to close that out. Let's give that enough gap. So I want to start writing my code. Now I'm going to start declaring the variable. So I'm just going to paste this code because I've already written it. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to prolong this video, but I'm going to paste it and start um, explaining it one after the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is to declare my variable. So um, I'm going to, I'm declaring the tabs variable, which will select all the auxi tabs classes. Now, if you have more than one tab, uh, you can prefix this with, let's say, maybe an ID of the container, you know, the container ID so that it can select only the tab in that container. But for now, I have just one tab, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Feel free to modify it. I'm also selecting all the tab contents using the general Oxy tab content class. And then I'm also declaring a variable called tab ID which I have set an initial value of zero and tab content ID, which I have set an initial value of zero. The next thing I'm going to do is to loop through all the tabs. And then for each of them, I'm going to set a data ID to be equals to the tab ID. The initial value of the tab ID is zero. And therefore for each of them, it's going to add and then increment for each one. So it's going to be, uh, the first one is going to be zero. The second one is going to be one, etc. That is why we have tab plus plus. So the first time it loops through, it's going to add zero loops through again at one and so on. The next thing I'm going to do is to loop through the tab content and 
we're going to have our code also inside there. And this is where all the magic is going to happen. For the tab contents, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the data ID for each of them and increment it for each of them. So they are basically going to have the same set of data ID. This is important because we're going to use that to connect each tab contents to each tab. Now that we have done that, the next thing we're going to do is to create the button. So I'm going to create two buttons. The first one is going to be next button and which is going to be document.createElement button. So we're using a button, we're creating a button element and we're going to create another button called previous button. And after creating that button, we're going to go ahead and add a class to each of them. So next button dot class list dot add next button and then the previous button dot class list dot add previous button the next thing we're going to do is to change the inner text of that button now we have created the button but it is empty it's just an empty button there's no text in it so we want to add text inside it so the previous button inner text is going to be previous question uh, of course this feel free to change this uh, to whatever you want to you know you can just call it previous anything you want to call it and the next button dot inner text is going to be next question so this is basically the text inside the button and after that we're going to assign area levels to each of these buttons so i'm going to assign so i'm saying next button dot set attribute area level now we're going to use the inner text as the area level you can feel free to change this to anything you want but remember if you're going to change this to a text you're going to wrap it in a quotation mark like this like a string but because I'm using a variable, I can just drop that variable here. So for this next button, the area label will be previous question. And then for the previous button, the area label will be next. Uh, did I say, sorry, this is supposed to be the first one. So let me just bring that first. So now we have created a button. I'm going to save this and then take a look at the front end so far. As you can see, there's really nothing here because the button is created, but we have not yet added it to our document. But it's just there somewhere so the next thing we're going to do is to start adding this button the first button we're going to add is the next button now let's take a look at the previous uh, uh original example now take note that the next button is only added to the first and then second third fourth is not added in the last so the last one will not have it so the first one and all others will have except the last so we need a logic that will say if the tab index of the content is equals to zero, that is the data ID is equals to zero because we have added those data ID. If it is equals to zero, we want it to have that next button. So if it is equals to one, two, three, four, five minus one. So we want to add from here. Okay. We don't want it to add to the last. So I'm just going to paste the code that represents that logic. So we're saying if tab content dot data set dot ID is equals to zero or tab content dot data set dot ID is less than tab contents dot length minus one tab content dot append next button. So we're appending the next button. And then for the previous button, that one is very easy. All we need to do is to add it if the tab contents data ID is greater than zero. So once it is greater than zero, meaning it's not the first one, we're gonna it's gonna be on every other one except the first one. So I'm gonna add that piece of code that says if tab contents dot data set dot id is greater than zero, then tab content dot append previous bottle. So we are appending the previous button. So I'm gonna save it, and then I'm going to refresh and see what happens. Uh, I'm not seeing any button. I'm just quickly gonna check check the console if there is any error and there is no error okay let's head back to oxygen what i'm supposed to do is to commit these um because i'm using the block part i need to commit it to the code block so um, because the block part once you finish using it you have to commit it to the code block or you make sure your cursor is inside the code while you are pressing the save button so that is going to commit it automatically to the code block so that is the reason so I'm going to just go and refresh it again. And you can see we have a button next question. Of course, nothing happens when you click it. Then when we come here, you have the next and previous. Here you have next and previous. Here you have only the previous. So that's good. We have set up that button. Now, uh, I think what I'm going to do is to quickly style that button. So I'm just going to open the CSS section. I already have a CSS that I've written for that button. So I'm going to put the CSS in there. Then I'm going to explain what that CSS does. So I'm going to put this here. Let me just quickly do that okay so the first thing i'm doing is to make sure that i 
select the auxi tab content and set it to display block the reason i'm doing that is because we're going to use the forgotten css uh, property uh the float okay so and for the float to work the parent has to be displayed block so i've set the auxi tab content to display block and then the previous and next button these are just regular styling padding margins and the colors and the hover color is here and then i've set the next button to um, to float right so i'm going to save that and take a look at the front end and of course it's not applying so let's take a look so yes still the same thing i still need to commit it uh yeah that is it so refresh all right so now um the next question is yeah we have it there and then we, you can see that it's properly styled now so the previous question floats to where it's supposed to float yeah but it's not working so if i click next and previous it's not working so the next thing we're going to do is to go back to the javascript section and then i'm going to add the remaining piece of the code that will bring this to a close first we're going to target the next button i'm going to paste this code and explain now what i'm saying here is if next button exists so we have to check if the next button is available and then if it is available then we're going to add uh, an event listener so we're saying next button dot add event listener a click event listener and then once we declare that event listener function we're going to um you know prevent the default action of the button i mean though there shouldn't be any default action but it's a good practice to always prevent the default then we're going to look through each of the tabs then we're going to check for the tab data id and if the tab data id is equal to, to the current tab content data id then we want to select that tab's next element sibling. Now remember that all this is inside the for each loop of the content. So we're saying for each of the content, go through the tabs and check the tab that has the data ID as this same uh, tab content. And then if you find that, click the next element sibling. So it's gonna click the next tab. So that's it for the next button. Then we're gonna do another one for the previous button. For the previous button, I'm going to paste this code here. And then we are saying if the previous button exists, then add event listener and prevent default also. Then we're going to loop through the tabs for each of the um, tab content we are currently at and check the tab ID that has the same data ID as this current tab content. And then we're going to say tab.previousElementSibling.click. So we're going to click the previous element sibling of the tab that corresponds to the data ID of the current tab content. And that should do the trick. So I'm gonna save this. Hopefully there's no error or rather, I forgot again, I have to save while I'm inside there or click here to commit or here to commit. If you minimize, it's gonna commit. So I'm going to refresh this and then let me click and you can see that it's working now. So now if I go ahead to add more tabs, to this so if i go ahead to add now let me do that if i go ahead to add let's say i add two more tab one two and just call this um five call that five and then i'm going to call this six and i'm going to do the same to the tab content one two so for this one um five uh yep that will be five and this will be six. So I'm gonna just save that and then check out the front end. Now we have just four tabs and you can see that this ends here. But by the time I refresh this, we're gonna have six tabs and you can see that we have all the way. So these buttons are dynamically added. So you don't need to manually create button, manually link. This is basically plug and play. So all you need to do is to copy this code, the JavaScript and the CSS. Notice you are not supposed to do any other thing. It is plug and play. You're not supposed to do any other thing. Just copy it and paste and that's it. So the only exception is that if you have more than one tab element on your page and you don't want to add the button to all your tab elements, you will have to prefix this selection with, um, yeah, with the parent of that particular tab element. Say you had this as the parent. So you can give it an ID or a class and then prefix it in that code so that um, 
it's gonna be it's gonna select just that and if you need to also prefix anything here on the CSS uh, personally I don't think it is necessary this is okay to be like that so that's it for adding the next and previous button to your tab element and if you loved this video please smash the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed do so and hit the notification bell so you don't miss other videos if you want to learn more about the tabs element check out all these videos linked at the top right corner I have a lot of tabs tutorial on the channel until next time have a great day